What's going on guys? This is Ryan with RK Outpost and Disney is going all out this year for Star Wars Day, May the 4th. Now you may have heard me talk before about how I think it's incredibly stupid that we are now in this Disney Star Wars era celebrating May the 4th as Star Wars Day when for decades Star Wars Day was May 25th because that actually means something to Star Wars and to Star Wars fans. May the 25th is when Star Wars was released in theaters in 1977, which then became A New Hope. Uh, May 25th was also, six years later, 1983, the day Return of the Jedi came out and completed the original trilogy. So May 25th actually has meaning to Star Wars. May the 4th is just a meme. May the 4th be with you. And it's funny, a lot of people said it, but... The idea that that is Star Wars Day is everything about Disney in a nutshell. It is empty, it means nothing, but it's a meme and it's marketable, so that's what they use. But when you go to the Disney Plus website, you can see May the 4th be with you. They are really banking on it this year with a couple big things coming out on Disney Plus. The Rise of Skywalker released very early, much earlier than people anticipated. Maybe the uh, digital sales aren't doing so hot there. And then... Uh, Disney Gallery Star Wars The Mandalorian. I actually think that this is going to be really interesting to watch. This is the making of The Mandalorian. Now, you know my thoughts on Mandalorian, but I'm interested to see a lot of behind-the-scenes things. I want to hear these people talk about how they made that, so that'll be interesting. Still running on my free Disney Plus subscription from Verizon. I only have till October, so I guess I'll enjoy it until then because I'm not paying for this. But the one thing that so many people are talking about is that last episode of The Clone Wars that just came out. Episode 7, or Episode 12 of Season 7, Death and Victory. And I want to give my thoughts a little bit on that. It's not going to be as in detail as most of my reviews of The Clone Wars are. Um, I missed last week's uh, Episode 11 because, you know, F Naughty Dog and all the stuff I was going through. But I am going to be talking about spoilers. Real briefly, I'll just say that this episode was a satisfying conclusion to the Siege of Mandalore. I thought it may be a little bit weaker episode, but it's only because um, I think we all knew how it was going to end, right? We know that Maul and Ahsoka and Rex are going to live. That's not a spoiler. You all know that. So getting there, we know where it's going. I think maybe that's why this one seemed a little, uh, a little less... Maybe from that big high we had in episode 10, where we have the Maul Ahsoka face off, and then even in 11, the chaos of Order 66. But um, that being said, I really just want to talk about everything that happened, so let's get into spoilers. <laughs> So this episode starts off right where we left off with Ahsoka and Rex being trapped in the med bay after Ahsoka has removed Rex's chip. Now obviously all these other clones uh, are trying to kill them. They are still under the influence of the chip for Order 66. Ahsoka says something about the effect I don't want to hurt anybody and I really appreciated that. Because one of my critiques of episode 11 was the fact that they were just, she was just slaughtering these clones. Uh, to try to save Rex. And I was saying, listen, one of the things, one of the key points of this show has always been that they treat the clones like they give them humanity. Now, maybe not as well as it was done in the Karen Travis books in the Star Wars Expanded Universe, but one of the things Filoni was able to do, and a lot of people like it, was that he was able to give the clones personality. But it's not just Rex, it's all of the clones. So she was slaughtering a lot of clones in order to save Rex. And indeed, she let Maul loose, knowing that he would slaughter anyone who came his way to save Rex. So I thought it was an interesting to say, I don't want to hurt anyone. And we kind of see later how she feels about that. Uh, she knows what the clones are going to do, but she just doesn't want to be the ones to actually end them if she doesn't have to. Um, then we kind of go to Maul, and we see that Maul is still wreaking havoc on the ship. He actually goes down... And in a, a crazy display of power, um, destroys the hyperdrive generator just with the force. Just down there, these massive things. He's just crushing them, bringing them down as people are attacking him. Uh, we see Maul being more of a badass in this episode. Ahsoka and Rex are trying to escape and they realize that the hyperdrive has failed. That someone has destroyed the hyperdrive and it is now, the ship is now like in a gravity well being pulled towards a moon now this is very reminiscent when you think about it everything they have done is tied the siege of mandalore into revenge of the sith i don't necessarily love how closely they're trying to mirror these you have now you have this ship 
um, starting to head towards the planet in the planet's gravity while without able to control their descent you know it's going to crash in the same way that you have at the beginning of revenge of the sith that kind of feeling as well obviously these timelines don't meet up because we know order 66 has already happened but it's the same kind of feeling and Ahsoka and Rex need to go. So they need to steal a shuttle and escape before the ship crashes. But the clones are waiting for them. They know they were going to the hangar. They all come out with Jesse as the leader now that they feel Rex has betrayed them and is not complying with Order 66. Uh, Rex basically turns to Ahsoka and this is where he says, what are we going to do? And she, there's too many to fight. And besides, I don't want to hurt them. That's what I was talking about. That whole idea of not wanting to hurt the clones and rex says you know that they're programmed they are just going to kill you they don't care and she says that i like i understand that but i'm not going to be the one to kill them uh it's kind of like the secondhand thing like i realize that i let maul loose on everybody uh and that he's going to kill them but it's not me so i guess that's kind of justifiable to her that helps me understand a little bit what happened in episode 11 still don't quite buy it totally but i totally get the situation that they are in so i'm able to say all right I, I get what they're doing there if i had watched these back to back instead of all spread out i probably wouldn't have had the complaints about episode 11 that i did so they come up with a plan uh rex having ahsoka at gunpoint basically coming out and saying i've captured her trying to stall for time but it doesn't work out so well. Uh, Ahsoka finds, she has the droids that she had in episode 11. They are working on a distraction effectively. And as soon as it's time, they drop the floors. And so many of the clones are on these lifts, whether they're weapons lifts, uh, uh, lifts for vehicles. I'm not quite sure, but the lifts drop them down out of sight, out of play for the time. And they're able to fight off using stun bolts the rest of these clones as Ahsoka's deflecting blaster fire. But then Maul comes in and causes chaos and he takes the shuttle that they were supposed to have. And here's an interesting part. I, I hope that I hear people talk about this. I heard a lot of people in Rise of Skywalker complain about Rey being able to grab a ship out of the middle of the air when it's trying to escape, full thrusters trying to escape, but having the power of the force to hold it back. Ahsoka does the exact same thing, literally exactly like that scene. We see Ahsoka grab the shuttle that Maul is in and try to hold it back. As Maul increases thrusters more and more and more, and still it's not moving. Ahsoka is holding it back until she realizes that she has to save Rex. This is where we get that decision from the Ahsoka novel where she can either try to stop Maul or save Rex and she makes the decision to save Rex and keep defending him as Maul escapes. A lot of people complained about Rey's ability to use the Force in that way and about how crazy it was for her to be able to stop that ship. Um, I'm interested to see if the same people talk about this. This is clearly a callback to Rise of Skywalker. This is clearly um, right in lines with that. So... Um, interesting to me, any Clone Wars fans and how you feel about that. Let me know in the comments below. But then they need to find another way to escape. So they are trying to fight their way through these clones still. Um, there's a little bit peril. Ahsoka ends up, at one point, Ahsoka ends up kind of like hanging down. A droid saves her by uh, using their rope to kind of grab her. And she is hanging there, deflecting blaster bolts. Um, interesting scene. Eventually what happens is Rex gets in a, in a Y-Wing as the ship is crumbling apart and Ahsoka ends up getting flung out. She is falling along with the ship as it's headed towards this desolate moon. And then you have this scene where Rex is flying with the Y-Wing through the, through the wreckage in order to get Ahsoka. They do a great job of giving you the feeling like these characters might not make it, especially Ahsoka, even though we all know that she will make it. And at the end of the day, she does get in there and they escape to the ground. Once they're on the ground, there's a, a very interesting moment where um, Ahsoka is looking at all of these stakes with clone helmets on them. Um, and you can feel like the guilt and the sadness that she feels that all these clones are killed. Again, um, coming back to that whole thing where like she kind of knew that they were going to die. Um, she just could not be the one to do it. She refused to be the one to do it in her words even if Maul slaughters them all, and even if they all die when they hit the ground. So um, I, I thought that was a powerful moment. She leaves one of her lightsabers behind, 
and that does kind of go in line with the Ahsoka novel, this previously established canon, although there she, she did bury her both of her lightsabers there. That's not exactly the way it worked, but it's for all intents and purposes, it's kind of the same. I'm not sure why they didn't just go ahead and have her bury it, but then at the end, a scene that a lot of people are talking about, um, this, obviously, a time jump later, you see stormtroopers, you see them in snow gear because uh, it did become winter here on this planet, who knows how long it's been, and you see Darth Vader. Anakin is there, he's obviously tracking down to see what happened to Ahsoka. He gets there and he uncovers the snow and finds Ahsoka's lightsaber and ignites it. Um, and that's essentially the way the series ends, just like that. So overall, um, a, a solid ending. For me, I think that watching them all at once would have been a much better way. I would have had much less complaints in between episodes. Um, but overall, for Clone Wars fans, uh, I'm really happy that they get this Siege of Mandalore, this final arc for them. The animation was incredible. The music was incredible. Basically, throughout this whole series, I will say that I felt like this was the weakest score for me. The score didn't stand out in this one like it did in all of the others. But that being said, a, a solid way to end the Clone Wars. All these fans, you know, hashtag Ahsoka lives, hashtag save Clone Wars. All these people that love Ahsoka and really wanted to see the Clone Wars end the way it should have. I'm glad they got their wish. Clone Wars isn't my thing. A lot of you guys know that. I've never really bought into it as much as so many others. Uh, this Siege of Mandalore, although it's really well done, to me, I don't think that... Uh, I think that making Ahsoka and Maul such an important part of what happened during Order 66 and, the, and Revenge of the Sith, um, I have a hard time believing any of that happened without us seeing it in the movie. But for those Clone Wars fans, I'm really happy that you got to enjoy it. It's the best Clone Wars that I have ever seen. Uh, again, throughout these seven seasons, whether we ever see any more Clone Wars is yet to be seen. Obviously, this will be the end as far as the end of the timeline for Clone Wars, but we know Lucasfilm has 40 more episodes that they were intending to use, um, or that they at least had stories for. Will those ever see the light of day? I guess we'll see. Based on the response to this season may depend on if we ever see those episodes ever sprinkled in throughout the timeline. But that's it for this episode. I'm glad that I don't have to talk about Clone Wars anymore because I know a lot of people don't like my take on it. But I gotta give you my opinion whether you like it or not. Make sure you smash the like button. Leave a comment below. Let me know how you felt about this arc, about the Siege of Mandalore. How you felt this episode ties in and whether it was better or worse than the previous three in this arc. Subscribe to the channel, smash the like button, ring the bell for notifications, share this video out there, and I will talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching, everyone. And a huge shout out to my patrons. I appreciate you guys so much. Want to follow me on Twitter or Instagram? Check out the description below. You'll find links to my P.O. Box and my Patreon as well. And I'll talk to you guys later.